What's going on guys, Twig and Tim are outdoors and today I'm going to break down everything a novice or beginner fly angler needs to know about their gear, the terminology, and what these different things do that we're asked to buy. So when we're told to go buy a fly rod, there are obviously many different ways to go about buying a new rod. But regardless, if you buy from a reputable manufacturer or if you buy from online, you're most likely going to end up receiving a rod tube. A rod tube typically is a hollow tube, either an open body, like an open tube, or multiple sections or dividers maybe inside. This is padded and this is a way to protect your new rod from the elements, but most importantly from you, because most of the brakes we see are in car doors, are transporting this and that, are carrying around the house, what have you. This just makes it convenient and easy in a smaller package to transport. So now you open up your fly rod and you've put the three sections or four sections or two sections together. And I'm going to break down from back to front what these different parts on the rod are called. The first piece we have here is the reel seat. The reel seat comes in a variety of types. This one happens to be a uh, where these actual locking nuts, there are two here, push the reel seat and, and open-ended like teeth closer into the body of our grip, our cork grip. So the reel will sit right in here and these locking nuts will push one forward, let it seat, seat nicely and then we'll spin the other one to lock it in place. Then we get to our grip. Now, this is what's called a half wells. There are full wells grips as well, as well as some rods you might see will might have a fighting butt at the end. Now, each of these different types of grips are typically used for specific lengths and weights and rods, but, but don't be fooled. Each grip isn't specific to a different grip style, what have you. It's typically just what's comfortable in your hand. Now, this one does not have a fighting butt, but a fighting butt would be used if you're fighting large game fish to seat the butt against you as you work a fish one way or the other. Side note, I never suggest any angler gripping above the grip here. Um, whenever you're fighting a fish, it reduces the amount of bend and give your rod has, as well as puts a focal point for energy in your rod, that's where we see a lot of snaps when we see fighting steelhead or um, some saltwater species. Moving on on a rod, next you see a hook keep here. This right here happens to be a closed one. Sometimes they're facing forward, sometimes your rod might not have one. Regardless, it's a nice feature to have on some of these rods that you're going to see you know, anglers moving from spot to spot. We've made it to our first guide. Now, typically on fly rods, the first one or two guides will be fairly similar to this. Different materials, different metals, but this is a typical style eye guide, okay? And then, on this rod in particular, we see these two different pieces right here. They're not actually pieces. Believe it or not, these are threads. And what happens to create the rod is the um, this piece is seated against the rod blank and then it's wrapped in thread and epoxied over. But, right here, we have our first ferrule. This is called a ferrule, and a ferrule is where the rod blank fits together. Very similarly, um, the ferrule is wrapped in epoxy to add additional protection. In older rod blanks, you typically figured that these parts are going to be the weakest part of the rod, therefore that's why you see two-piece or single-piece rods. But with modern tech, the number of ferrules isn't as important because most of the rods flex similarly and fairly well throughout. We then see our next bit here is called a snake guide. They call it a snake guide because as you look down and to the side, you see that the metal itself will come from the blank, twist like a snake, and come back. Again, it's adhered to the blank the same way as our first guide is. Now, as you see, coming down the rod, we, we get smaller and smaller in our taper, and we see a very specific uh, number of guides along the blank until we get to our tip top. Now our tip top is a very sensitive part of the rod and we see a lot of breaks here as well. Um, if you notice the rod blank has a very specific type of top to the end. It is uh, replaceable, yes, but we tend to not want to have to replace this part of the rod or any part of the rod for that matter. Um, and this is the part that is the most sensitive of the rod. There you have it. Those are the terms of the parts of the rod. Now I want to get to the reel and some of the accessory things that go 
as a part of the rod. Here I have a reel. Now this reel does not fit with this rod, however, it is a very typical reel, no line on it, so I can show you the different parts easily. What we see on a reel is the reel comes typically in two different parts. We have the reel base here, okay, and this is the part that attaches to the rod. We have our drag knob, and that is part all of the internal drag system in the body of our reel. And then typically, each reel will have a detachable spool. Now fly reels are measured in arbor size. Essentially, how much line can it hold? A large arbor like this has a lot of space from the center diameter until the outer diameter and that allows us to take up line fairly quickly. The downside to it is that it doesn't hold quite as much fly line. Now on our drag knob, typically clockwise will cause the drag to tighten up. It'll spin one way most and tight the other way. There are other types of reels that are called click paw reels and those will have the same amount of drag, quote unquote, one way or the other because it is caused by friction. Many reel companies will allow you to buy separate spools to allow you to keep different types of line on your spare spools to swap out quickly for different rods. That brings us to fly lines. Now fly lines will come in a variety of colors and a variety of sizes. Now here's an example of super fly fly line. Now this comes in a WF9 floating forward. Now, what this means, a WF means weight forward. That's the type of line where the weight is designed in the front of the line to allow you to cast farther. Floating, this is in a nine weight. WF9, weight forward, floating nine weight. High vis yellow, but there are different types. Typically we see sinking lines and intermediate lines, and each one of these will be have a number rating. In fly fishing, the higher the number rating, the thicker and heavier, typically, the fly line will be. This allows us to use different sized rods to cast different sized flies. A fly line has different sections as well. There's a part that attaches directly to the reel. Then we, you have what's called the belly of the line. The belly of the line in a weight forward line is typically thin whereas the belly in a dual taper or double taper line is usually thin only for a small section where then the line tapers back out. Research different types of lines in different videos in my channel and I'll demonstrate how each one has its pros and cons. But alongside of our different sized lines, we also have different sized leaders. So your tapered leader is not the same as tippet. It is in the material, but it's used differently. A tapered leader attaches the thicker end to one side, which is your fly line, and then what essentially what it does is as you cast, the thicker end has more energy and it releases that energy into the smaller part of the tapered leader. Now, the tapered leader typically, when you buy it brand new, has a good mm, 12, 18 to 24 inches, depending, of level tip it. You can cast and fish with a tapered leader right out of the box, but I always recommend buying a couple spare spools of tippet. Now, tippet, just like your fly leader, okay, tippet has sizes. Your tapered leader will have a size. In fly fishing, the, the higher the number, the thinner the diameter. There are calculations and there are rules and reasons for this that we can discuss in a different video. Just know that typically, a 7x leader, you'd like to pair with either with a 7 or 8x tippet. A 5x leader, you'd like to pair with a 5 or 6x tippet. That is because you want the tippet to be s the smallest part of your, your tapered leader. And how you do that is at the end of your tapered leader, after you've tied a few flies, that long level piece of thin diameter tippet is going to be chewed away. What you do is you add additional tippet to the desired length using either a surgeon's knot or a blood knot or any leader to leader type knot. And what that does is it prolongs the life of your expensive tapered leader. There are multiple types of flies and those flies get tied onto the end of your tippet. Now there are sinking flies, typically nymphs. We have dry flies that float subsurface. We have emergers, which f sit in the film. We have streamers, which we impart action on. Check my channel for additional videos on different flies, but we're gonna go, we're gonna skip over that for now. Typically with companies that produce split shots, specifically for fly fishing, they're measured in grams. This is because you're allowed to get much smaller and finite and understand best which weight is required to get as close to where you need to get your flies to reach the fish you're trying to fish. 
This is a little more scientific, but essentially know that fly fishing split shot is smaller and a little more exact, so that way you know where you're fishing. There are two very, there are two common types of waders we see in fly fishing. We have breathable waders and neoprene waders. Neoprene typically is much warmer as well as a little Neoprene is much is, neoprene is typically much warmer as well as a little snugger fit whereas breathable waders are typically a little lighter and they're made of either a special like microprene or PVC or a lighter material. And in addition to the types of material, you also have boot fit and you also have stocking foot. And both of these have their pros and cons. Again, check the channel for a video on that where we go into detail on the pros and cons of both. Hopefully breaking down these different terms in fly fishing helps the novice and beginner. Again, check out the channel for additional content that will further explain some of these much larger and more in-depth topics. Hopefully you liked the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. Until next time guys, catch you guys on the flip side, tight lines, and we're out.